About two years ago, I traveled to Thailand and had a few surfing lessons there um, on Phuket Island. I found that I really love it because surfing brings me a sense of freedom and happiness that I've never experienced before. So after I came back to Hong Kong, I started to look for places that I can go for surfing during the weekend. And I found a place in Shack O. This is the picture of that beach that I found online. Looks pretty good, right? Not too bad. But this is what it actually looked like. I was shocked to see how much trash was dumped around the beach. I even saw seabirds floating over the garbage, which made me extremely sad. I found all kinds of plastic disposals, including plastic bags, drinking bottles, straws, toothbrushes, etc. At that moment, I was so upset about people who threw all this trash here and ruined the beautiful scenery. It even ruined my mood. But when I tried to look at the trash carefully, I found that some of them look so familiar that it actually reminded me of the takeaway container that I had used a few days before. So, something like this. But wait, this remote beach in Shao has very few visitors, so I was wondering where all this trash came from. I found that here in Hong Kong, since we don't have mandatory waste separating and recycling system implemented, most of our trash are being sent to our landfill. And because most of our landfill are very close to the sea, so on a windy and a rainy day, trash will be carried towards streams, rivers, and finally ends up in ocean. Statistics show that over 70% of the ocean garbage is plastic, likely due to its being very lightweight and can be easily carried by wind. Well, that means I was actually one of the people who contributing to this waste problem. So what can I do? Um, contributing to this waste problem. Um, so let me give you an example. Very often, I grab a bottle of water from the convenience store, finish it, and threw it away. I think that I was doing good enough because um, I threw my trash into the, into the trash bin instead of leaving them onto the street. That is what our parents and teachers taught us, right? But where would this trash go after we toss them into the bin? Are they being recycled? Are they bare in the landfill? Will it end up in the ocean? Or will it magically disappear? I don't know. But why did I not realize it earlier? Because here in Hong Kong, like most of the Hong Kong, I spend most of my time on myself, um, with, on my work, study, and social life, basically focusing on myself and how I can live a more, more convenient life. But I really care about what was happening in the nature environment. Um, so even though sometimes from time to time I read news about plastic pollutions on TV or social media, I felt there was something very far away from me because it was not affecting me personally. I was so disconnected with the nature. So what can I do? After my experience at the beach, I started to think about what I can do to stop sending more trash into the landfill. So I did some research online and came across a book called Zero Waste Home, written by Bea Johnson, a French mother who lives a fully zero waste lifestyle. The trash that she and her family produce each year can fit into a small glass drawer. Her story was so inspiring that actually made me believe living without trash is possible. It really encouraged me to start my own zero waste journey here in Hong Kong. So, to begin with, I tried to figure out what kind of trash that I actually produce every day. So I decided to collect all the trash that I produce from the moment I wake up until I go to bed. I found that majority of them are disposable cups, containers, utensils, and food packages. It is quite ironic to think that most of these items bring my life convenience for a very short time, but they're going to stay in our landfill in the next hundreds of years. It may sound funny, but I weighed my daily trash, and it's about half a kilogram. 
So can you guess how many kilograms of trash that each Hong Kong people produce every day? More or less? Yes, you are right. According to the data from the Environmental Production Department, each Hong Kong people produce one and a half kilogram of trash each day. So it's about three bags of this on average. But I don't want to be the average. So I, after I looking into my trash, I decided to make some changes in my life. The first change I made was, instead of buying water and beverage in the um, plastic bottles, I decided to carry my own reusable drinking bottles and coffee mug. If I plan to buy takeaway lunch, I will bring my own container and utensils. So simply by bringing my own containers, I was able to reduce about 50% of my daily waste. The second thing I did was stop buying prepackaged food. I found that almost everything, literally everything in the supermarket are packaged in plastic, paper, or glass. So, instead of going to the supermarket to buy my, to do my grocery shopping, I choose to shop at the local web market with my own reusable bags and containers. There are a lot of package-free products that you can buy in bulk at the market, even like rice, noodle, pasta, and different kinds of snacks. By doing my grocery shopping this way, I got rid of another 20% of my daily waste. The third thing that I started doing was making DIY products. I noticed that all my personal products, including um, body wash, shampoo, makeup removers, are packaged in plastic bottles. But thanks to the internet, I was able to find a lot of homemade recipes online. In fact, there are a lot of household products can be made at home with basic ingredients. Let me give you an example. By simply mixing water, baking soda, and few drops of peppermint essential oil, I was able to make my own chemical-free mouthwash. Very simple, right? So another 20% of the waste is out of the list. The last thing, also my favorite things that I did, was start decluttering and minimizing the things that I owned. I used to be a girl who loved shopping and visited the shopping mall almost every week. I probably changed my phone cases every month and updated my wardrobe every season. So you can imagine how much trash I used to produce. But living a zero waste life really encouraged me to think about what I really need. Are those things necessary for me? So instead of holding on to everything, I only keep the thing that serve a purpose and bring me happiness. Um, I no longer keep a lot of things. Um, I not only own less things now, but I also treasure them more and take better care of them. So if they get torn or broken, I will try my best to fix them instead of instantly replacing them. So living zero waste is not just a journey to reduce waste or lifestyle that I simply enjoy. It really allows me to become more aware of the environment and have an empathy to, for nature. I realize that for each action that I take, for each product I purchase, and for each choice that I make, can have an impact on the environment. Remember the last year the super typhoon man could hit Hong Kong and left behind piles of plastic waste and polystyrene foam in parts of territory. People even found the plastic water bottle from 1998 and the fast food container used 22 years ago. As we can see, the whole world is connected by causation. As the old saying goes, what goes around comes around. Going zero waste not only helps me to reconnect with nature, it's also a wonderful journey that allows me to reconnect with myself. By letting go of the things that I don't really need in my life, my home has less clutter now. I no longer spend a lot of time finding and organizing things. Um, you know, the best part is cleaning become much more easier. This decluttering mindset even can apply it into our everyday life. For example, by removing the activities that don't add value or bring me joy from my schedule, I was able to spend more quality time with my friends and family. I feel much happier and more connected to myself and the people who I care. But sadly, 
Not everyone feels the same way as I do. So during my whole zero waste journey, I received a lot of comments and criticism. I remember once I bring my lunchbox to a restaurant to buy take food to take away. The lady there was very mad at me. She said I was wasting her time. I was very troublesome because obviously there were a lot of people lining up during the peak hour. And sometimes when I ask the waitress、um, in the restaurant not to put a straw in my drink, they give me a funny look like, "Ooh, okay." <laughs> But I know I do this for a good reason. When I think about if I can use one less plastic straw a day. More than 350 straws can be saved from our landfill. If I can stop a food container ending up in the ocean and prevent it from coming back when the next typhoon hits, then it no longer matters how other people judge me or ridicule me. So please don't underestimate each small action that you take. They may seem insignificant, but each small individual action. Can add up to make a big difference. Even though there are still a lot of misunderstandings and even prejudice toward sustainable living in Hong Kong, I'm quite positive about the future. As I can see, in recent years, more and more individuals, brands, organizations, and even the government have started to spend efforts on reducing plastic waste. So, for example, I found that、um, the the canteen in this campus has stopped offering. Plastic straws on its own initiative, and I find some coffee shops provide discounts to customers who bring their own reusable cup or stainless steel straw. Last weekend, I went to the wet market near my home. As usual, I asked the food shop owner if she can put the grape I bought into my reusable bag. I was surprised to see that she was not only very willing to do so, but also gave me a little bit more in return because she said I didn't use her past bag, which I really appreciated. But I know only myself cannot make a huge difference, so I always share all my personal experience and benefits of living zero waste with my friends and family. I'm very grateful to see more and more people are getting inspired by this idea. And start to make some changes in their life. Let me share a personal story about my mother. Even my mom, who used to believe that only the chemical detergents are able to clean properly clean stains, started to make her own cleaning product and shows of her recipes to her friends. All this gave me the motivation of starting my own zero waste business, called Basic Ye. Ye means items in Cantonese. So when we put it together, it means the basic things, or the essentials that you need to live a sustainable lifestyle. By starting this venture, I hope more people can get access to zero waste product locally, and have a platform to check out zero waste tips and sustainable living in Hong Kong. So in practice, living without trash is possible, and trust me, it's not that hard. All you need is just a little bit of preparation and commitment. So, if you'd like to start your own zero waste journey, I would like to suggest you to start by looking at your trash can and understanding what it is inside. Then, think about a couple of things that you would like to give a try. For example, it can be as easy as bringing a reusable bag with you, ask for no straw when you order a drink next time. Or just say no, thank you to Phoebe's that you don't actually need. But remember, going zero waste is a journey, so you don't have to go from 100% to zero immediately to make a difference. Don't push yourself too hard and start with baby steps. Start with the things that you feel more comfortable with, and when these little steps、um, turn into sustainable habits, you'll be surprised to see how much waste you can actually avoid. For me, the reason behind living zero waste is very simple. I would like to surf in a clean and a beautiful beach in the rest of my life, and I hope everyone here can be able to enjoy the beauty of nature as well. Now there are already a lot of tools, tips, choices out there waiting for you, ready for you. So what are you still waiting for? Thank you.